Hey guys, welcome to SS Unitex which will decide and this is continuation of ADF tutorial. So today we are going to see about the joint transformation. To use the joint transformation to combine data from two sources or streams in mapping data flow, the output stream will include all the columns from both the sources matching based on the join condition. So the join transformation is very similar to the joins inside the SQL Server and join types are mainly five different types that you can see here the first which is the inner join second is the left outer join third is the right join then the full outer join then the custom cross join so these five types of join available inside the azure data factory the same thing as we have already seen inside the sql server we are having the inner join left outer join right outer join full outer join and cross join so in case of the inner join, whatever the data sets that we are having inside the left and inside the right. So all the matching data sets from the left and the right side will be inside the inner join. So this part will be returning in case of the inner join. In case of the left outer join, it will return all the data from the left table and matching data from the right table. So in this case, it will be returning whole from this. In case of the right outer join, it will be returning only from the right side table all the data and matching data from the left side table. So this will be returning. In case of the full outer join, it will return all the data from the left table, all the data from the right table and matching and non-matching data all will be returning. After that the custom cross join. So this will be like cross join if your left table is having four row and your right table are is also having four row so the output that will be 16 row so this is the joins inside the sql server the same we can say inside the azure data factory so now go to the browser and we'll try to implement this in practical so here we are having these two sources one is the payroll file and second is the employee file in case of the payroll file we can see the employee ids like one two three and five and when we can go inside the employee data file so this employee data file will have the data for employee 1 2 3 and 4 so 4 is not available in the payroll and 5 is not available in the employee so that we can see now we can go inside the azure data factory here let me try to add a new data flow and let me quickly call this data flow as join transformation now here we can add the source so as i told you it is required to have two input sources or streams so in our case we have two files inside the azure blob storage so we can click on the add source and here we have already created the data set for employee file so we can use the same as we can go here and inside the data set we can see this employee file so this we can select and inside the projection we can see all these four columns now we can go inside the data preview and we'll try to look inside the data preview so it should be returning four rows with employee id one two three and four so that we can see here now we are required to add one more data source so this data source is mainly focused on payroll file so we did not created the data set for the payroll file so i am going to use the inline query so inline query we have seen in the last video of this video series so we can go here and this is for the delimited file so we can select this delimited text then the link service so ssu testing is the link service so we can select that now we can go in the source option and under the source option we can find the file path so we can browse and here we can go in the input and after that we can select this payroll one click on ok go to the projection and we can import the schema if you are not going to import the schema so this inline query will not be going to say how many columns it has so here as we can see it has four columns but the column names is not correct so we can go in the source option again and here we can see like first row as header so we can select it and go to the projection and try to import the schema again now we can wait 
so that's it we can go in the data preview and here let me try to refresh so it should have four rows here with the employee id 1 2 3 and 5 so that we can see now we have done with the source side now we are required to add the join so here the first one under this multiple inputs and outputs so we can see this join so it is taking two input and providing one output only so let me try to click on the join and under this join we can check the properties so the stream name that we can see join one that is okay leave as it is left stream that is the source one that we can see what will be the right stream so right stream will be the source two that we have created for the payroll data so let me try to select from this drop down this right stream now here we can see the join types so the join type that is the inner join by default then left outer join right outer join full outer join then the custom cross join so in this video we are going to see about full outer join inner join left outer join and right join we'll cover the cross join in later of this video series so let me go in the inner join and here we can see the join condition so we have to specify the join conditions here so let me click on this drop down so we just want to match with the employee id from the source one and from the source two so we have selected as we can see now here it is reflecting an error because you can see this is in red this is because as we can see the data type of this source one stream that is abc it means this is text and this is something like sort so the data type is not matching so what we can do on that case go to the source again and this is the sort this is not the text actual so we can go in the source option sorry inside the projection and inside the projection we can change this as sort now we can go on the join and this red symbol has gone so this is now good now here we can see the plus sign so once we click on the plus sign then it will be adding another column so if you your condition is based on multiple columns like the employee id and then we want to match with the employee name and the combination of multiple columns will be making the on condition so on that scenario we can click on this plus and we can add the other columns here so in our case the employee id is the only one so let me delete this now we can go in the optimize so under the optimize we can see the broadcast and the partition option so i am not going to touch this by default leave as it is now we can go inside the data preview and try to refresh this so this time it should be going to return the all the columns from the left table and the right table so that will be the source one and source two so that we can see so as we have used the inner join so only matching data which is the employee id 1 2 and 3 so that's why it is returning only these three row and all the columns from the left table and from the right table now we can go inside the join setting and try to change this from inner join to left outer join and now go to the data preview and try to refresh it again so this time it will be returning four rows with employee id 1 2 3 and 4 and inside 4 the employee id is not available inside the right stream so that's why we can see this is null and the payroll month salary and tax so everything is null whatever the data that is available in the left table is getting from here now here go back to the join setting again and try to make this as right outer join and go to the data preview and try to refresh it here we can see like four rows it, it is returning with the employee id 1 2 and 3 which is the matching one and employee id 5 which is available in the right stream so that is not in the left so that's why we can see null values in the left table columns now go to the join setting and let me try to make this as full outer join go to the data preview and try to refresh it so this time it will return five rows with the employee id 1 2 3 4 and 5 and in case of the employee id 4 the right table will not have the employee 4 there so the columns from the right table will have null 
and in case of employee id 5 that we can see left table did not have the employee id 5 so the column values will be null for those so this is the join types that we have seen now here we can see the use fuzzy matching option so fuzzy matching is going to join between two string type of columns so here we don't have any string type of column so don't worry for now we'll be going to cover this use fuzzy matching option while covering this cross join so after doing this we want to load this inside the destination so we can click on this plus symbol and here we can see the option for the sync so we can click on this sync and we can add so this will have total seven columns that we couldn't see so thank you so much for watching this video if you really like this video please subscribe our channel to get many more videos see you in the next video